Back in the 2000s, the Underworld series became one of the most well-known action horror franchises ever made. Through its first three films, Underworld, Underworld Evolution, and Underworld Rise of the Lycans, the series capitalized on the growing demand for grit and darkness in otherwise ridiculous stories. And while it may not have had the critical acclaim of films like Blade, it helped fill out what was, at least at the time, a fairly niche genre in vampire action. Of course, it also saturated itself with many contemporary cliches, including some of the most extreme uses of skin-tight leather. However, though people often remember the franchise for its dark, moody aesthetic, grimy practical effects, and of course, Kate Beckinsale, its characters and lore often seem to go relatively unnoticed. For an action horror, its characters and setting, which were increasingly expanded upon during the first three films, often outshined much of its mainstream competition. Rewatching the series recently, I found myself much more invested in the complexities of some of its characters than I thought I would be, and Victor in particular stood out as the character that seemed to push past many of the series' limitations and become something closer to Game of Thrones than any early 2000s vampire action movie character should be allowed to. Each subsequent film in the original trilogy reveals more about Victor than the last, and his character becomes more complicated and interesting. When we first meet him, we can immediately see his strong sense of duty and order. He seems unyielding in his beliefs, even to those he considers family. Selene breaks the rules by waking him despite not being an elder herself and disrupting the cycle by doing so when it is not his turn to rule. Upon learning this, he does not show her leniency because he views her as a daughter, but seemingly holds her to the same standard as he would anyone else. You have broken the chain and the covenant. You must be judged. This sense of control and adherence to the rules Victor displays during his introduction, even in the context of those he loves, is built upon in later appearances. In his past, as shown in Underworld Rise of the Lycans, Victor's unmoving nature persists. He orders Lucian, one of his slaves, to be whipped because he took off his collar and transformed into a lycan, breaking one of Victor's rules. He did this despite Lucian having saved his daughter's life, which was only possible because he had taken off his collar. So, even though his rule would have caused his daughter to die had Lucian followed it, Victor did not make an exception or give him special treatment and still chose to punish him despite being grateful for his actions. Have you no gratitude for the one who saved your daughter's life? I am a washwoman. That he lives shows the breadth of my magnanimity. He did say, though, that he would have killed him had he taken it off for any other reason, but this still shows that Victor's leniency mainly extends to situations that involve his daughter. Were it any other circumstances, I would have had him fed in pieces to his own kind. He chose to punish Lucian despite having saved Sonya because he generally does not consider the context or ramifications of following or not following individual rules. Instead, he subscribes to the idea that his rules should be followed regardless of the situation because he believes that they are not, the uncertainty of whether any rules should or should not be followed in specific circumstances could lead to an unraveling of order and put the sanctity of his coven and species in jeopardy. Victor, though, does have emotion. He may seem cold and heartless, but often shows a deep love for his coven, his daughter Sonya, and, above all else, his species. His sense of duty and order come from a desire to protect and keep pure that which he holds dear. He believes that his strict and unflinching rule will keep his society thriving, even at the expense of some individual's happiness and freedom. Even through all of the harsh choices he makes, he does care for some things, though it may be hard to see. He is most clearly shown to care for Sonya, repeatedly giving her less severe punishment than he would to others. Many of his actions are put in reference to the survival of the coven. He makes clear that he wants to keep it safe and sustainable. He values his place in the coven and takes his role as its protector seriously. However, what I find most interesting about Victor are his contradictions. He seems unyielding and sturdy. He puts on a display of control and order and appears to never make specific exceptions, but time after time, he does just that. When Marcus awakens, he says that Victor couldn't follow his own rules. Never could follow his own rules. Said he couldn't abide the taste of livestock. So every once in a while he not engorged himself in human blood. Despite speaking against doing so in order to maintain the secrecy and value of his coven, Victor occasionally feasted on human blood rather than livestock and gorged himself on Celine's family. Upon learning that his daughter had a relationship with a lycan, we are led to believe that he would have punished her for committing such a crime, but would have given her a far more lenient punishment than if she had not been his daughter, revealing that under some extreme circumstances, especially those involving his daughter, Victor would bend the rules despite seeming incapable of doing so. As I mentioned earlier, he showed a small degree of leniency to Lucian as well by deciding to whip rather than kill him because he took off his collar to save his daughter's life. In any other circumstance, he would have killed him. However, this willingness to privately bend the rules for Sonya changed when he learned that she was pregnant with a hybrid baby fathered by a lycan. 
At this point, his leniency could extend no further. Though he had always detested the Lycans, he could have forgiven her for simply loving one. But after learning that she was gestating a Lycan's child, he could no longer excuse his daughter's actions, saying that they were a betrayal of the coven. This night was not about you, it was about him. I could have given Lucian to the council and they need never have known of your indiscretion. But after this, never. So he decides to send her to the council to decide her fate. And while not explicitly stated, it is implied that a unanimous vote was needed to sentence her to death. And as each vote drew us closer to that conclusion, we were ultimately left with Victor's decision. At this point, he could choose to save or kill her. And we had already seen that while Victor claims a degree of unflinching dedication to the laws of the coven, he often chose not to follow them himself, especially in the context of Sonya. So it wouldn't be unprecedented for him to be the sole vote to save her. In fact, it would have been understandable as that was his only daughter, someone who had likely been with him for a few centuries by this point. I... Take her to the chamber. But despite all of this, Victor still sentenced her to death purely because of what was growing inside of her, illustrating what is perhaps Victor's most defining characteristic and drawing a line that Victor will not cross, even for his own daughter. Victor also has a need to feel and be seen as superior. In the first film, we, like nearly all of the others in his coven, are led to believe that Victor was the first vampire. But in the sequel, we learn that he was simply turned by another. Victor was not the first of our kind as you were led to believe. He was once human. The ruler of these lands. In Victor's case, though, he was turned by Marcus, the original vampire, in exchange for his and his army's help in capturing Marcus's brother, William. Before Marcus turned him, Victor was a wealthy king who had gotten nearly anything he could want, but would inevitably still fall victim to that which all may have fallen death. On his deathbed, barely clinging to life, Victor accepted Marcus's deal and gained immortality. To him, he had become the perfect creature. He was no longer just a ruler, but now a vampire gifted with extraordinary physical abilities and vitality. He saw himself above all others. This need for superiority only becomes more apparent when people talk about Victor. Now, I don't know exactly why the other vampires believe Victor was the first, but regardless of whether he himself started this lie, he allowed it to spread because it only further granted him a false sense of superiority, even over Marcus, the original vampire and the one who turned him. This myth caused the others to revere him, to not only see him as better, but to an innate level, that his place at the top was simply the natural order. His sense of superiority had been warped into his emotions and distorted him to the point that he values immortality more than family, at least when he looks at it from someone else's perspective. When he tells Selene about the truth of her family, he says that immortality is worth more than her family's lives. I have taken from him. Is it not a fair trade, the life I have granted you, the, the gift of immortality? Perhaps he would trade his immortality for his daughter's life and only says this because he looks at it from Selene's perspective, which could be indicative of how lowly he views others. But this scene implies that he holds his own status as a vampire, his immortality, his strength and speed above that of anything or anyone else. This extreme need to be above others may also be the real reason why he kills his daughter. On the surface, he chooses to kill her because she was with a lichen and bore his child, a hybrid creature that could be stronger than both vampires and lichens. But upon closer inspection, he may have chosen to kill her because it would threaten his sense of superiority as what many believe to be the oldest vampire. If allowed to live, a hybrid could be seen as better than both vampires and lichens, even above Victor himself. This, however, would destroy his perception as the natural peak and perfect being. And for someone who values superiority as much as Victor, he absolutely could not allow such a creature to live under any circumstances. Throughout Victor's characterization, we repeatedly see his intense disdain for lichens. He views them as animals meant to be ruled over and owned as slaves. Lucian even attempting to create something that could threaten Victor's superiority, whether intentional or not, forced Victor, at least from his perspective, to punish him, ruthlessly even. This man had become so overwhelmed with hatred towards Lucian simply for being a lichen who mated with his daughter because he saw his own race as superior that he used his own daughter's death to emotionally torture him. Victor's need to be seen as great and above all others persisted throughout all of his appearances in the films and was never more apparent than when put in context against the Lycan. In his eyes, the one thing that could threaten his place at the top and as the perfect creature. His sense of self-worth, which had been perpetuated throughout his entire life, even from before he was a vampire, is so important to him that he maintains these strict codes to keep the species separate, subjugating the only species that could threaten his species and thereby his own proclaimed reign. 
Hybrids threaten his sense of superiority and his status as a perfect being, so he will go to any lengths to deny their existence, even if that means killing his own daughter whom he loved so much that he would have initially bent his sacred rules to keep safe. Victor is a man concerned with perception. He wants to be viewed as powerful and in control, but privately takes actions that contradict that goal. He punishes people for doing the right thing, even though following certain rules in certain contexts would likely lead to negative consequences because he presents an image of upholding the laws he views as sacred, regardless of the situation or repercussion. However, he hides his own betrayal of these same laws in private contexts, such as when he feasts on human blood or tries to conceal his daughter's relationship with Lucian. He does this to maintain his perception as an unyielding leader, one who does not play favorites or make exceptions. He wants to be seen as correct and just, but also succumbs to his own desires which often contradict the image he wishes to create. But above all else, he values his superiority and many of his decisions revolve around maintaining that perception from others and perhaps himself as well. He allows the lie that he is the oldest vampire to perpetuate because it strengthens his value, elevating it to natural law and making his judgments and very existence revered. By the time of the first film, his sense of self-worth is so high that he has become disillusioned with others' values. He believes that his immortality has more value than family, to the point that he claims it as a gift and uses it to justify killing someone's loved ones. His sense of superiority breeds this overwhelming disgust for lichens and desire to rule over and enslave them. It also extends to his treatment of hybrids, a race that could potentially threaten this perceived sense of inherent value. I loved my daughter. but the abomination growing in her womb was a betrayal of me and of the coven. I did what was necessary to protect the species, as I am forced to do yet again. In total, Victor's character has a level of complexity unmatched by any other character in the series. His hypocrisy and need to be revered makes him and his choices compelling and the most notable piece of the Underworld franchise. Thanks for watching.